a lot of folks um there's been a lot of folks asking leon and i to kind of to kind of show off some of the stuff that that we have in our respective vaults and you know we thought about battles and whatnot not really the route we're gonna go we're gonna find different themes and, and kind of and kind of show some hats that are that are in our respective vaults so um, every week, uh, we're going to come up with a different theme and we're going to show you guys some stuff. Um, so this week's theme, um, is defunct major league baseball logo. So we're going to show our five favorites. Um, that's, that's, that's what we're going to do this week. And, and next week it'll be something different, but, um, I'm pretty excited to show you, um, my favorites. Um, so do so, you want me to take it away, Leon, or do you want to start? Yeah. No, you go, you go first. All right, cool. You're not going in order, are you? I, there's no specific order. Yeah. I'm just going to show them all. If it made yeah. it to your list, it's it's yeah. a good. One. Yeah, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go now, and I'm going to show off the cap a little bit. Cool. So, um, this I had to show my Red Sox love. Mm -hmm. This was their logo from 1950. Their alternate logo from 1950 to 1959. Mookie Betts used that one in his, uh, I guess, his player design hats. Right, he recently yeah. back. That was a cool. That's a cool logo. This is a hat club hat that I picked up a few years back too. The green bottom. I also have like something else with like a like that meshy material, but this is this is the one I decided to show off today. Another one of my favorite um favorite logos, 1976 to 1990, White Sox. Yeah. Shout out to TJ. He picked this up for me at Grandstand out in Chicago and sent it my way. Mm -hmm. but this just i love that batterman for some reason there's something about it that i just like and this cap has a gray bottom and that heather gray um crown with that batterman old school batterman yeah yep next you know everyone loves chief wahoo right mm -hmm. everyone loves chief wahoo but I went with a Boston Braves logo, 1929 to 1935. I had a couple of hats. There's something I, I love this man. It looks more like I don't know, man. Like serious, right? These yeah. this looks like a serious depiction of a Native American. And for me, this logo is just is just is just tremendously underrated. But also amongst the defunct logos in MLB. Next. Expos. The Expos, man. You can't go wrong with an Expos cap. The Expos utilized this logo from 92 till they were done in 2004. You know, this is also one of my favorite players of all time wore this cap, and that was uh, Pedro Martinez. So do you, do you read that as ELB or do you read that as an M? This is one of, you know, you were talking about how you didn't realize the Milwaukee Brewers was an MB, right? Yeah. I always, when I was a kid, and you know, as a kid, you don't really know any better. I thought this was a J and a B. Okay. I didn't know. I was like, what the heck do they have a J and a B for? I never, I never, re I never figured it out. Yeah. But if then you combine them all, it's them. It looks good though. I love that logo. Yeah. And the last one. Would be the 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 Mets um very briefly used Mr. Met as their alternate logo in the nineties, ninety five to ninety eight. And this thing, uh, Mr. Met to me is the epitome of a baseball mascot. Yeah, super That's cool. Awesome. Um, I give the edge to him over um Mr. Red, right? Mm hmm. But those are mine, man. Those are my um, five favorite defunct MLB logos. Cool, cool. Thanks for that. Um, so I'll start with mine. So the uh, Seattle Pilots were um, a team they only lasted a year. So I think the main beef with them was they didn't have a stadium to play in. So they were beefing and – I think they eventually sold to like Bud Selig um, in Milwaukee and then something happened and then they ended up not moving and then they did move or whatever. So I'll flash forward. So Seattle pilots, they played one year uh, in Seattle, they moved, they became the Milwaukee Brewers. But when um, Seattle tried to sue the, uh, 
the city uh, or tried to sue the MLB um, for allowing the team to move and all that other stuff. So to kind of quash that beef, they were awarded an expansion team. So the Mariners came back uh, the same, where Seattle got a team and they became the Mariners um, same year as Toronto. Um, but that, that end, uh, I don't know, something about it, man. Like, it's just nice and simple. And I've got it right behind back, me too. Yeah. They brought back the, um, the colorway of the pilots. The, the colorway was copied um, by the brewers, I guess. Um, yeah. But this Seattle, um, Griffey wore this, uh, this M. Um, I don't really like the nautical stuff about the, the current more, uh, more no? stuff. No, I just like the simple S. If they would have kept this, I would have been really, really happy. But this yeah. is definitely a top five defunct uh, MLB logo for me. Nice. Um, so then, the S, not the Seattle Pilots, that S you showed me is one yeah, of your five. Yeah, I, I just went and I, I did a long-winded kind of history lesson. No, no, I like it, man. I like it. I like it. I like it. But th this is the one. And then um, in terms of defunct, um, the, the, the old Florida Marlins moniker or uh, logo, you can't go wrong with that teal. Yeah. I guess in the, in, in the 90s when everyone was using, uh, overusing black and teal, they, they mastered it. So um, it was always that weird. Reminds me of, that reminds me of Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown, yeah. Yeah. Jeff Conine and all yeah. those guys. Um, but something about it, it just – um, really, really captured that time with, with the overuse. I think at, back then everyone was using like purple and black and silver and whatever, but this, they, they really hit, hit it out of the park. I don't really like their new stuff with the M, uh, the Miami Marlins for the longest while. That was like a weird looking logo to me with the yeah. orange and the blue. And then now, now they have the Miami Vice stuff. So they're almost yeah. kind of going back towards yeah. this stuff, almost. Yeah. But this stuff to me, Top five defunct. Floor I market. debated. I debated putting that in my top five. I really did. Like it almost doesn't feel old enough to really be a retro, but then when you really think about it, that was like thirty years ago almost, right? So, yeah. Uh, and then, um, you mentioned that everyone likes Wahoo, so I naturally I went Wahoo. So, um, it's always going to be a debate whether or not this logo is racist or whether it is or it isn't or whatever, but. Um, in terms of stuff that you hate to see to go, I understand why um, they have to move away from it. But in terms of I, just icons, Chief Wahoo, it's an amazing logo. Whether or not you're racist, I'm sorry. So I brought out the bigger ones as well. Yeah, but I get both sides of the debate. I'm not really going to touch it, but I get both sides of the debate. I understand. Um. And then the, the, the super weird one is the Just Fades one. I don't even know if I should show this hat, but I brought it out, so I'm going to show it. So. Yeah, I'm going to show it. The Blackface Chief Wahoo. Yeah. This one's hard to find. Yeah. So I've seen some guys online um, that are that are almost um, like like kind of putting like um, cool. almost like Swarovski crystals in the teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a version where it's like Blackface with one gold tooth. Um, yeah. That, that's the one. And then um, we talked about him a little bit earlier, but uh, Swinging Friar alternate 1967 Padres. Yeah. One of the best logos you could get. Mm -hmm. um, was not actually, I don't believe it was their official logo, but Swinging Friar Padres. It's an ode to, um, I guess, helping the Spanish help form their city or something. I could be botching that story, but... Um, that's pretty much why I heard they are called the Padres. So, and then we had the controversial spring yeah. train one. I think you and I bought that on the same day. Yeah. We're like, screw it. If it's going to get pulled, like let's, let's buy it. It's not like we have any ties or whatever, but if you guys do know the story of this one. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how something, a design like that gets through so many people and then makes it to the public without someone seeing the potential fallout you know and what i mean like i saw the hat and i never saw it but once you see it you can't unsee it right but like you know for, for me like it's just amazing to me that that felt no about it. Yeah. You, you have to have hundreds of people looking at these hats man before they make it to the public and someone had to have seen it that way 
<laughs> or they're just not they're just, they're just not paying attention enough. I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the hat. No, because it's clearly a San, it's S and a D, right? Yeah, but I do I, I do get it, man. But there, that's what that's what you're supposed to catch before it hits the public. It's interesting. That it yeah, didn't. yeah. No one from San Diego. No one from New Era. Like no one like pulled the brakes on it. It hit. Yeah. It hit shelves. People wear it. I believe they had to wear it once to fulfill the contract because they advertised it as an on-field spring training hat. So yeah, I'm not. I sure think those spring training hats are terrible. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I mean, they're just terrible. And the fabric is bad. You put them on, they're just floppy. I mean. They don't look like they're expensive hats ever. But I think no. what's interesting about spring training is that all the hat collectors always, 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 and it's like clockwork, we wait till we see how Hat Club deals with it. Because the first year that they did it and they released the spring oh, training stuff yeah. in Poly, we're like, yo, this is how spring training hats got to be. And then they did it again this year and they did it with uh, alternate logos, um, different kind of colorways. They made some of They the- went with a different patch for Arizona and Florida. Yeah. Listen, can I tell you what literally drove me to buy more from Hat Club in that specific drop was how bad the on-fields were. Yeah, this year specifically. Yeah, once I saw the once and the St. Patrick's Day ones were terrible too. Yeah, and they... uh. And what's good about them is they actually did the, the embroidered patches because what was the big complaint a couple of years ago, not only with the diff, like moving around from um, diamond era to uh, pro light to whatever. Yeah. It was the, the stupid Chrome patches. Like wow. those. So hat club, they did us uh, poly embroidered. And I was like, Whoa. So yeah. I have a bunch of those. I think that was from two years ago. But uh, shout out to Hat Club. I mean, like that's in, in in that time, around every time of the year, number one thing we look for is what's happening with the Copas, like who's coming out with new identities, what logos getting updated, whatever. But second to that is going to be what does Hat Club do for spring training? And it's listen, old- and you know what? This sounds sometimes like a Hat Club love fest, right? But I want to be clear here: they're just doing it the best right now. Yeah, that's all it is. I mean. I'm not going to go around and, and spend my money with someone who's not doing it right. Yeah. You know, like I bought the spring training cap for the Red Sox and the, and the, and the um, St. Patrick's day version of, of uh, for the Red Sox, the regular on field versions only because I do it every year. Yeah. Other than that, I wouldn't have spent a penny on those hats. They've got yeah. to improve those. Yeah. I actually resisted. So I told myself this year, I'm not buying the spring training hats. They look weird. I mean, surprisingly, Toronto was one of the better ones of the ones that they released. I think Toronto was good. I think Houston was okay. Yeah. But uh, New Era ended up canceling an order of mine, and I had two free hats. So I was like, all right, screw it. Give me the, the same pattern. Yeah. Give me the thing. So I, I, I didn't get them. No, I think I did get them for free because – they canceled the order and then so they so two hats got canceled. I didn't pay for them, but then yeah. they said that to make it up, you pick two hats and you get yeah. them. So I ended up getting for free, so I'm not mad, but I did not want to pay for those hats full price. Um, and then my last deep dive, sorry, we got on a tangent there, but uh my last yeah. deep dive uh is gonna be the tigers. So yeah. the tigers um have one of the cleanest looking hats currently, I would say. The, the yeah. old English D, they, yeah. they mess around with the size of the D a little bit, but they've gone back and they fixed it. They've gone back to the smaller D. Um, well, at one point, they had that, like, just the tiger silhouette, right? Yeah, yeah. But, like, uh, as of recently, um, I think it was 2018, they went with the big D, and it looked weird. So mm-hmm. some of the on-fields you can find with big, big old uh, old English Ds. But, yeah. Um, so they've had, like, crazy, like, crazy looking tigers over the years so i believe this is like the 1961 to 1963 tiger logo and then before that they had like a 1950s like they were talking like 57 to 60 like just crazy almost coked out tiger you can almost call this a coked out tiger until you meet the real coked out tiger so this is the alternate 1967 tigers logo and this one is just insane Yes, 
that's one of my favorite. Every time that hat comes out, man, it's gone in seconds. Yeah. So if you manage to get your hands on this um, hat club, shout out to hat club. They, they're retroing this hat as, mu as much as they can. Yeah, I have, two, I have two. I have that colorway and I have the gray crown with the blue brim. Yeah. And then for, for good reason, this one, top, 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 defunct logos. I mean, technically it's not an official logo. It's an alternate. But this coked out tiger, that's the one. Um, so that's, that's my top five. Um, dead or alive logos. Um, mostly dead, I guess. But yeah, that, that's all that's dead. Uh, all dead. <laughs> um defunct. being brought being resurrected by different hat companies exactly and you know what man hopefully someone sees this and and bring some of these logos back i'd love to get more colorways um of that but you know let us know in the comments you know like what did we miss anything you know do you not agree um you know yeah if you agree you could tell us too like you know that'll make us feel good too but um we tried to cover as much as we could in terms of uh logos that didn't exist were, were there any logos that you could think of that like almost made it but like you had to leave out because you asked me he's like yo do you want to only do five i'm like yo let's, yeah only got you know, the, five. the swinging fryer would have made mine um if i went any deeper yeah. um i would say there's the the swinging a's you know what I'm talking about? That that one that A's logo with the swinging. It says the swinging A's. Yeah, with the circle. That, yeah, yeah, that thing's really cool. Um, you know, I would say the Marlins almost made the cut. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I think the Astros with that 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 elongated star. You know what I'm talking about? The broken star. Yeah. Yeah, that that one's beautiful too. Listen, there's a lot, man. I, I you know how much I love logos, but there's a lot that. I could have went 25 if I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> you, you asked me about the Angry Jay. I actually, I don't like the Angry Jay. I do. The Black, the black Era. I think mo the reason why I don't like it is because it's it was just bad baseball to watch. So I associate that. Yeah, with so you associate it with a, with a, with a terrible period yeah. of, of baseball. Like we could just never get going. Um, yeah. Aaron yeah. Hill, Ross, uh, Alexis Rios, Vernon Wells, like, just wasted talent with uh, Roy Halladay. Like Roy Halladay was amazing, but we couldn't win for him. You know, it just it just was frustrating baseball to watch. So once yeah. we switched to blue, I think we kind of turned the corner a bit. But like, it it just was not enjoyable <laughs> baseball for me. Oh, Listen, you that's what you, you everyone has different things that associate them with different things, right? And yeah, like you know, different time periods or different feelings. Um, so there's a couple a couple of folks out there. So Pablo, not Celtics, because we were doing Major League Baseball. Um, defunct logos just so you just so you know you may have joined us late but that's what we were we were uh, working through today jason orioles um had had a few really good ones and a few really bad ones to be honest with you um but they they did have some good stuff um not uh chief nakahoma was was one that did miss my cut just barely almost made it too i have a couple of those but that's that's a pretty cool logo as well is that the braves that's the braves yeah yep yeah, that, that was right on the edge for me, too. That's I the one that reminds me of Dale Murphy in, in that yeah, year. Yeah. yeah, so listen, if it's all right, um, you know, before we wrap up, Leon, I'd like, to sh I'd like to just talk about what we have coming up, if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, so, so guys, um, um, you know, what, what we're thinking about, and I'd love to hear some stuff in the commentary or, or head over to FHS and Facebook and kind of comment there. Um, but, you know, Leon and I are looking to put together some round tables. So, you know, we're going to have some hat battles. We have a lot of other cool stuff going on, but we're looking to like have topical round tables. So um, basically, you know, we have a topic that we throw out there. We assemble um, a round table of like four or five folks, um, you know, virtually like we're doing right now and discuss a topic to kind of engage more folks in the community. So um, if anyone would, would be interested, A, in, 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 in participating in one, or B, you know, providing us some topics, some ideas, because we do have some ideas, but we'd love the community to contribute some ideas, ideas as well. Um, we'd love to get those started to started soon as well to give us some more diversity in what we're doing. Um, yeah. So please, you know, any ideas you have or anybody who wants to participate, let Leon and I know. Um, Leon and I are all about about making this uh, the best. Um, one-stop shop for uh, fitted news and, and commentary. Um, so whatever you need, just let us know and, and keep those ideas coming. Um, I, we'd really appreciate it.
Yeah, for sure. As much of it is uh, a Leon and Pierre show um, on the surface, there's it, this doesn't work without you guys and and bringing on guests and um, everyone that we've brought on um, from designers to collectors willing to battle it out and you know that this is really nothing but you know positive response. So we do appreciate anyone that's willing to come on and you know don't be shy. Like you know sometimes it's uh, it's better to put um a face to a name and whatever and i'm sure um like i don't think adam's really made like any personal appearances other than our show and same with tony but once you get to know these guys like i know i'm on a personal level so yeah. like it's, it's not nothing special for me well like, it is special but it's it's not nothing out of the norm but you know if, if you want to step out there and you're part of it and you know we'll, we'll we'll take the request and we'll make sure we 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 have everything make sense but open invite for whoever wants to come on We'll discuss it and we'll yeah. make sure um, you guys have a good platform. Well, yeah, and the show's the community show and we want to we yeah. put your ideas into action. So yeah. um, listen, uh, make sure if you haven't already done it, make sure you hit the subscribe, the subscribe button because what we're trying to do is expand our reach, man. We want to get more people involved in this community. We want to get more people um, um, joining FHS and other, and, and, and other hat groups just to continue to, to create this growth because – the more that we um, expand and the more folks we get involved, um, the better it's going to be. So um, thanks, everybody. Um, thanks for sticking out with us. Uh, we've, been, we've been on for quite a while, but we appreciate you staying on with us. Um, stay fitted, and we'll talk to you soon.